Welcome to CoreLogic's Housing Market Update for July 2023. Australian housing values moved through a fourth month of recovery, with CoreLogic's National Home Value Index rising 1.1% in June, decelerating slightly from the 1.2% gain recorded in May. Since finding a flaw in February, the national measure of housing values has gained 3.4%, but remains 6% below peak levels recorded in April of 2022. That's the equivalent of the median dwelling value being about $46,000 below the record highs seen last year. Every capital city except Hobart saw dwelling values rise in June, with Sydney continuing to lead the cycle, up another 1.7% in June to be 6.7% higher since values found a floor in January. In dollar terms, Sydney's median dwelling value is rising by roughly $4,262 a week. A lack of available supply continues to be the main factor keeping upwards pressure on housing values. Through June, the flow of new capital city listings was nearly 10% below the previous five-year average, and total inventory levels are more than 25% below average. Simultaneously, a June quarter estimate of capital city sales is tracking 2.1% above the previous five-year average. Although housing values continue to record a broad-based upswing, the pace of growth across most capitals eased in June, potentially reflecting a change in sentiment as interest rate expectations revise upwards. Higher interest rates and lower sentiment will likely weigh on the number of active buyers, helping to rebalance the disconnect between demand and supply. Regional housing values have also trended higher, albeit at a slower pace relative to the capitals. The combined regionals index has risen by a total of 1.2% since the recent low in February. The softer housing trend relative to the capitals aligns with a shift in demographic factors. After regional population growth boomed through the worst of the pandemic, internal migration trends have normalised over the past year, resulting in less housing demand across the regional markets. Additionally, housing demand from overseas migration is traditionally skewed towards the capital cities rather than the regions. Despite the recent uptick, most regions continue to see housing values below their recent cyclical highs. Hobart housing values have recorded the largest cumulative decline, holding 12.9% below the record high in May last year. Across the capital cities, Perth is the only capital where home values are at record highs, having recovered from the relatively mild 0.9% decline through the downturn. Adelaide home values are only 0.3% below record highs and likely to reach a new record high in July. The imbalance between supply and demand has seen selling conditions turn in favour of vendors rather than buyers. Auction clearance rates across the combined capitals held in the highest 60% range through June, in stark contrast to late last year when clearance rates were generally below 60%. Outside of auction markets, vendors have become less flexible when it comes to pricing expectations, with capital city discounting rates tightening from 4.3% late last year to 3.6% in June. Rental conditions remain diverse across the nation, but there is growing evidence that the rate of growth in rents is easing. The National Rental Index increased a further 0.7% in June, which is still well above the pre-COVID average of 0.2% month on month, However, the rate is a continued deceleration and the smallest monthly rise since January of 2023. Similarly, the annual growth trend in capital city rents has eased from 11.7% in April to 11.5% in June, while the combined regional areas of Australia has seen a more significant reduction in annual rental growth, slowing from 4.9% from the record high of 12.5% over the year to September 2021. While rental vacancy rates have generally ticked a little higher over recent months, they remain well below average levels. Higher vacancy rates are most evident across regional Australia, rising from 1.3% in February 2022 to 1.5% in June this year. However, even at 1.5%, the current rate is less than half the decade average of 3.3%. Vacancy rates across the combined capitals have risen from 1% earlier this year to 1.1%, but are holding well below the decade average of 2.8%. Perth is the only capital city where housing values are at a record high. Following a paltry 0.9% reduction in values, Perth housing values have risen over six of the past eight months. 
Although the market has recovered to new record highs, median values remain well below most other capital cities, reflecting relatively affordable price points. A reflection of the long-running downturn where Perth's housing values dropped by 20% between 2014 and 2019. This affordability, along with strong migration from both interstate and overseas, alongside persistently low advertised stock levels and tight rental conditions, are all factors supporting the local market. Across the subregions of Perth, the quarterly pace of growth ranged from a 5.6% gain at Armadale to flat conditions in Cottesloe, Claremont. Although the recovery trend has become entrenched over the past four months, the outlook for housing values remains uncertain amid an expectation of higher interest rates, weaker economic conditions and stretched household balance sheets. The trajectory of interest rates will be a critical factor in the housing market's performance, even after the RBA's July decision to hold the cash rate at 4.1%. There's still the potential for an August rate hike, and forecasts on where the cash rate will land and how long it will stay elevated vary. It's hard to imagine the recent pace of growth in housing values being sustainable under a higher interest rate setting, especially while sentiment is close to the lows recorded during the global financial crisis and the full rate hiking cycle hasn't been experienced by all borrowers. The coming months will see an unprecedented peak in the number of fixed rate borrowers refinancing to significantly higher mortgage rates. The RBA has previously estimated that 880,000 fixed rate mortgages will expire in 2023, refinancing from mortgage rates around 2% to possibly higher than 6%. Higher interest rates also imply credit will be less available, especially considering new mortgage borrowers continue to be assessed at a mortgage rate 3 percentage points higher than the origination rate. Additionally, lenders have become more cautious, with further reductions in high debt-to-income ratio and high loan-to-valuation ratio lending. As we saw through the periods of tighter macroprudential policies and higher serviceability assessments between 2017 and 2019, credit availability plays an important role in housing markets. Another key risk for housing conditions is the potential for a rise in advertised housing stock. Low inventory levels have arguably been the most important factor placing upwards pressure on housing prices. A change in the supply dynamic could become evident in spring when the flow of new listings would typically start to ramp up. We could also see more listings flow onto the marketplace if mortgage stress becomes more widespread. At the moment, we aren't seeing any signs that advertised housing stock is rising, at least at a macro level. Some areas, such as Hobart, have seen listings rise to above average levels, but from a very low base. This will be a key trend to watch moving forward. While the downside risks to the housing sector are clear, there are some mitigating factors, including record levels of net overseas migration, a burgeoning undersupply in housing, and an expectation that labour markets will hold reasonably tight. Net overseas migration is expected to reach 400,000 this financial year, which is almost 27% above the previous record high recorded in 2008. While overseas migrants typically rent rather than purchase on arrival, the increase in overall housing demand will likely support housing values as demand spills over from the rental sector and long-term migrants make a purchasing decision. At the same time, the pipeline of approved housing supply is around decade lows and trending lower, setting the housing sector up for an undersupply of newly built homes over the medium term. NIFIC is forecasting Australia's housing sector will be undersupplied to the tune of around 175,000 dwellings by 2027. Such a significant underbuild is another factor likely to support housing prices. With the unemployment rate expected to remain well below the long-run average, most borrowers should be able to maintain their mortgage repayments, albeit with some pullback in discretionary spending and a further depletion of savings. The latest forecasts from the RBA have Australia's unemployment rate rising from 3.6% in May to 4.5% by the end of next year. Although higher, this forecasted rate of unemployment is almost a full percentage point below the decade average. As always, there's a lot happening in and around the housing sector. If you'd like to stay in touch with all that's happening as it happens, tune into the research pages at the CoreLogic website at corelogic.com.au.